Good morning, everybody. What you may not know is that President Knapp and Diane Knapp are also farmers, besides the leaders of our university here. They have a small family farm out in Maryland where uh, they have, um, they're, they're producing wool, and their daughter is part of the growing American cup flower movement that I'm very supportive of. So it's great to be here. So welcome to my new home, George Washington University, where I am just excited to be working with 170 faculty members and 10 research institutes engaged in sustainability work here on our campus. What a great opportunity for me. Princeton Review um, calls GW, uh, calls it out as having the most politically active students in the country. Guess what? I like that. <laughs> you know why? Because food, first and foremost, is a political problem. You know this. The United Nations and many scholarly works state emphatically that already today there's plenty of food to go around to feed the world and yet we have 805 million hungry people in the world today and you probably saw the study that came out last week that says even here in the united states now more than half of children in our public school system qualify for free and reduced lunch. Poverty. Poverty. Poverty? Well, that's a political problem. Looking forward, a lot of people talk about population growth and the need to increase food production in the world. Some say double it. I've seen projections we need to increase food production by 70%. A lot of talk about technology, a lot of talk about how to innovate, um, how to do new fangled kinds of agriculture. I'm very excited about some of the things going on in our urban centers and vertical growing and all these sort of things. But uh, as much as I'm all enthused about the, the uh, and, and, and very um, strongly feel that we need to continue to evolve agriculture, just not in this country, but around the globe, I understand that's really complicated. Let me give you a few examples. Livestock production. So when you look across the globe, half of our land that's available for agriculture is for livestock. About a fourth for actually raising the animals themselves, and a fourth of the land for growing the feed that livestock need. With increasing incomes in, developing, in the developing world, we have a lot of projections that the demand for livestock animal protein products is going to rise. Well, that becomes a problem, right? It's an environmental challenge. It's a nutritional challenge as we're all trying to move toward a more plant-based diet. We want to try to figure out this problem, and we want to do it in a way that makes farmers and ranchers whole. Bottom line, it's a political problem. Women, now if you've heard me speak recently, you know I'm just crazed about this issue. The farmers in the world are women. Not so much here in the United States, so we're seeing a nice little trend line, ladies. But around the world, the farmers are women. And the World Bank, and the Food Agricultural Organization have both put out reports that say if women were given the same access to education, to resources, to leadership positions as men, world food production would increase by 30%, which is the equivalent of feeding 150 million people. Women empowerment, that's a political problem. So here we are, we've got two days of great opportunity to talk, um, and to set up visions of where we can go. I don't want us to get trapped in all the negativity, all the problem statements. I want our conversations to be f infused with visions of things that can be done differently. Let's um, make some bold new solutions and, and have those infiltrate our conversations. For me, there are a lot of heroes, and as my friend Teresa Marquez uses the word sheroes, in the audience, I'm going to be listening very carefully, 
an outstanding lineup of speakers. Um, I'm also reading all the time. If you haven't read Dan Barber's new book, The Third Plate, it's a must read, visions for how things could be differently. So new visions, new politics. That's what I hope we talk about here today. And as we talk about it, we avoid siloed discussions. We really want to make sure that we bring along farmers and ranchers and people in the ag industry in these conversations with us and have a robust, kind, thoughtful uh, conversation that leaves everybody whole at the end of the day as we work toward a different future. So I want to thank Food Tank for organizing this great event and for hosting it here at George Washington University's campus. And now I have the great pleasure of introducing the co-founder and president of Food Tank, Daniel Nuremberg, who I'm sure all of you follow in her incredibly uh, active Twitter account. Um, she is a prolific in terms of her writing, various kinds of reports. She's authored all sorts of important papers. Uh, she's a former Peace Corps volunteer in the DR. I'm very proud to say she's a graduate of the Agriculture, Food, and Environment program at the Friedman School at Tufts University, where I once was. Um, she has traveled the world looking deeply at agricultural systems, trying to think about solutions, and making sure we all benefit from her eyes and ears on the ground. So welcome to Danny, and welcome to GW.